Following total atomic annihilation, the rebuilding of this great nation of ours may fall to you. That's why we at vault -Tec have prepared these educational materials for you to better understand the seven defining attributes that make you special. Today, we will focus on strength. In the wasteland, essential supplies will be scarce. When an item of value is found, keep it close and away from bullies. The stronger you are, the more you can carry. Be sure to know your limits, or you may find it challenging to escape from hazardous scenarios, no matter how strong you are. There are other situations where you may find yourself in close proximity to unfriendly neighbors. For such cases, you must learn to defend yourself using your natural strength. Use anything sharp or sturdy enough to swing. Get creative with your implement, but stay reasonable and look for anything that can further enhance your innate vigor. The greater your strength, the greater the impact. But remember, some moments require more than muscle. Keep doing your chin-ups and push-ups because there's more strength can do for you. Swing for the fences like the pros, crafting specialized protective gear to keep, or building clever weapons to wield it. Regularly study your vault tech provided materials to prepare for survival. And to answer the question, do you know what makes you special? When Fallout 4 was revealed back in April, there was a lot of hype surrounding this game, and understandably so. I mean, Fallout has been one of the most uh, popular gaming series, you know, recently of the last 10 or so years. So it was no it was no shock that Fallout 4 was going to get the reception it got, and with all the hype surrounding this game, could it could it possibly live up to the hype? Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> Be okay. I love you. Oh my god! Hold on! Fallout 4 takes us to Boston, Massachusetts, which is now just called the Commonwealth. We meet our hero or he heroine in. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts in the year 2077, you're married, you've got a child, for the first time you can actually choose to be a female character, which I did because it would be something just a little bit different for this style of game, so yeah, I chose to be the female, I'm not, I'm not too manly to admit that, I'm really not, you've got a child, you've got this really annoying robot called Codsworth, but yeah, he's kind of integral to the part, just a little bit. Uh, so you get a knock on the door, door salesman's there asking you to secure a place in the vault just in case of nuclear fallout. And would you wouldn't you wouldn't you know it, that very same day, as soon as you sign that paperwork, the bombs start dropping. Now if you're not familiar with the history of Fallout, there is a very, very good video which I will link to in the description below if you aren't familiar with the history of Fallout and sort of why there's been a nuclear war. Click on the video down below after you've watched this one, of course. Gotta get the views on this one. And you can learn more about it there. But that's a very good video, I do recommend it. It's very spot on for the history of Fallout, so that's my recommendation. It's in the bottom below. So China starts dropping bombs on the United States. Your character just about gets into the Fallout show with her husband and son, and they put you in a stasis chamber, some sort of freeze pod. You're kind of delirious, you sort of wake up a little bit, and you see your partner get shot in the face. Now it's obviously either your wife or your husband, depending on which character you chose to, you chose to be. And you see your son get kidnapped. You go back to sleep and wake up and realize everybody else in the, in the vault's dead. 
I know, shocking. You find your way out of the vault and everything's in ruins and to be honest the game looks fantastic. The area around you, you've got all the burning corpses on the floor, as morbid as that sounds, looks amazing. The world just looks so dead, they use a lot of sort of like dark yellows and browns and it really looks dead, it really looks like in a, like in a nuclear fallout which is obviously a good thing for a, a game about a nuclear fallout so there's that, that's perfectly spot on, the environments look phenomenal in this game. So you head on back to town, you meet Codsworth who looks really mangled and he informs you it's now the year 2287 and you've been in the vault for 210 years. So that's kind of a bit of a shock for your character obviously. So the game sort of centers around trying to go, like, go through the wasteland to try and find your son Sean who I don't know, I haven't completed the game, I'm not anywhere near the end of the game. I'm not convinced Sean's still alive because you don't know for a fact that you know it was recently he was kidnapped because obviously you go back to sleep in the chamber and there's 210 years worth of you know, history while you're asleep so I wouldn't be surprised if that's revealed. But that's not a spoiler by the way, I don't know, that's just a guess so if that does turn out to be true that was just a good guess. So yeah you're basically trying to find Sean uh, while navigating through the nuclear wastelands and you meet new new people, you can sort of try and rebuild civilization. You've got this sort of base building mini games, it's not really mini games, just sort of part of the open world. That works quite well, I've not really experienced it too much myself to be perfectly honest with you. Um, you can recruit people to join your former town who will stay behind and start fixing things up. You can do side quests for them to help them fix up the town if you want to, or just do what I did and tell them to shove it when they ask you. That's always fun. Stop playing around, Danny. I'm standing out in the open here for crying out loud. I got orders not to let you in, Miss Piper. I'm sorry. I'm just doing my job. Ooh, just doing your job. Protecting Diamond City means keeping me out, is that it? <laughs> oh, look, it's the scary reporter. <gasps> I'm sorry, but Mayor McDonough's really steamed, Piper. Saying that article you wrote was all lies. The whole city's in a tizzy. You open this gate right now, Danny Sullivan. I live here. You can't just lock me out. <sighs> Damn it, Danny. Open up! You. You want into Diamond City, right? I just got here, but yeah. Shh. What? What's that? You said you're a trader up from Quincy? You have enough supplies to keep the general store stocked for a whole month? <laughs> you hear that, Danny? You gonna open the gate and let us in, or are you gonna be the one talking to Crazy Myrna about losing out on all the supply? Jeez, all right. I need to make it personal, Piper. Give me a minute. Better head inside quick before old Danny catches on to the bluff. So, you know, you can meet people such as Piper, who by, by far is the most interesting character in the game, in my opinion. Um, at least so far, at least who I've met so far. Nick Valentine as well, also a very interesting character. Him and Piper, definitely two of the best I've met so far. That includes the character you're playing as, because aside from trying to find Sean, there's not really too much about her. I mean, I understand why your character is obsessed with that. She just doesn't seem, or he doesn't seem... To have too much of a personality, I guess, not at this point in the game anyway, so that's kind of a bit disappointing, but that's generally the case with protagonists anyway. It's the supporting characters that generally have a lot more intrigue about them. But, you know what, that's, that's, I'm fine with that as long as there's interesting supporting characters, which there are. Uh, there's a lot of interesting enemies to fight along the way as well. Mutants, people who have, you know, mutated in the radiation. There's a lot of people who haven't mutated in the radiation who still are pricks, such as the raiders as well. And a lot of characters who aren't pricks, or characters that might be pricks, and they introduce you to this idea of the synths, which are basically, they look like humans, they act like humans, but they're actually synthetic humans of people who have been kidnapped by the government and replaced by robots. So that's an interesting plot. I can't wait to see where that goes, because I haven't really seen more about it apart from a bit of paranoia on the streets. But generally in a game, if there's a bit of paranoia on the streets, it's usually well-founded. So... 
Um, that's probably going to go somewhere, and I can't wait to see where it, where that goes. So there's not going not to be too many spoilers in this video because I'm not I'm really not that far through the game. I'm trying to take my time with it because that's another good thing about this game as well is that the story itself. I don't know how long it is, but there's so many side quests that you can just just jump straight into if you're not in an actual in-game story mission, and you can just literally do one of those. You know, there's a, a radio signal from Trinity Tower of this guy who's trying desperately to get away from these super mutants, and you can go to Trinity Tower, which is on the map somewhere. You can fight your way through the build through the building, killing all the super mutants, and save him. And there's just little quests like that. Fallout's known for it, obviously, these little side quests. It's not just the main game story, it's literally an expansive open world where you can go to the characters you need to go to to actually advance the story, but you can also go through all these side quests as well, and that's also very good. One thing I really like about this game as well is the crafting system. You can craft new weapons, you can name your weapons, you can craft new armor and upgrade it that way, and I think that works fantastic. Uh, you can do all sorts of things like lengthening the barrel, uh, shortening the barrel, it, it really does affect the stats as well on things like that, so that's also good. you got to keep in mind as well, you know, um, you might trade accuracy or you might trade uh, trade a bit of power for the other or things like that. So and that's also very good and I'm also, that's something I'm going to applaud them for. You can also add things to your guns as well, like adding a knife at the end of the barrel if you've run out of ammo. Jab your enemies in the eye with it! So there's that as well. You can upgrade your armor so that you're a lot more protected. It really does work in the way that if you are wearing heavily armored clothes, you are not going to die as quickly as if you walk around in your underwear, which you can also do. So there's that level of realism, but I didn't really expect anything else, to be honest, from this. So that's also very good. The perks tree in this game will keep you busy for ages, especially if you're a completionist, because I believe there's about 60 perks. I haven't seen the actual number, but I think it's about 60 you can actually get and also level them up as well. So it's more like several hundred if you count all the level ups of the perks as well. And the VAT shooting system, by the way, doesn't work as well as it should. I mean, if you've got 100% leveled up for you know perception, which I do, I worked on that first, you'll still miss right in front of the opponent. You'll get a shotgun, you can aim it at their face, with 100% on the perception, you will, if you're this close to the enemy, sometimes you will shoot the ceiling. And that is frustrating. That is very, very, very frustrating about this game. So it's definitely not perfect. A lot of the payouts as well from killing a lot of big enemies isn't really enough. Killing a death claw, for example, you're not going to get that many bottle caps. And bottle caps are needed in this game to you know, purchase ammo, to purchase weapons. Remember to loot. That is an important part of the game. Remember to loot. If you're new to the Fallout series, Loot, 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 loot. You can loot bodies, you can get things to then upgrade your weapons, to upgrade your armor. You need these things. Even if it just seems like a bunch of, you know, random screws, you'll need them. If it's a piece of, of, of steel, you'll need it. So even these little things that don't seem that important, you'll need them to upgrade your stuff. So loot as much as you can. Just remember that your character can only carry so much, and each individual item has its own weight. And obviously you can't overdo it with the weight, otherwise you can't run and you are going to get killed. So keep that in mind as well, so it's kind of that little trade-off. I like that as well because it adds more realism to the game. So it's not even about number of items in your bag, it's about weight of the items in your bag, and I think that's a better way of doing it rather than just say, yeah, I just have 120 items, whatever. Uh, you've got to worry about the weight, so you can't have you know, these big beastie ass weapons taking up all the space in your bag because they weigh more than regular pistols. By the way, the pistol, the one that you get at the start of the game, one of the best weapons I've come, I've come across. Better than some of the shotguns in the game. Even better than some of the sniper rifles, you work that one out. One thing I think is really missing from the game is that you can't do co-op on the you know, the main actual game. And that sucks because, especially with the fact that you can, can, you can actually travel with a companion, it seems like a perfect way of adding it in if you've got a friend who you want to complete the game with. That would have been something pretty good to add into the game if I play as you know, the main character uh, and my friend plays as Piper or Dugmeat or something, that would have been pretty damn interesting to be able to do that. I don't think any Fallout game has allowed you to do that in the past. So that would be something different, something new, something we could definitely do on the PS4 and Xbox One and PC. Definitely not something that's out of the realm of possibility, 
But unfortunately, they didn't really deliver on that, and that's really disappointing and disheartening because that could have been something so much better than it was. But again, it's not really something. It's, it's something extra that would have been nice for the game. It doesn't really ruin the game, though. It's definitely the sort of game you can definitely enjoy on your own because, let's face it, it's freaking Fallout 4. So overall, what do I think of Fallout 4? Do I think it lives up to the hype? I tend not to say yes on this sort of thing, but in this case, I'm going to say yeah. I mean, this was one of the most hyped up games of the year. Reaching levels of hype that really, only the Witcher 3 and games like that really sort of matched. So, I was a bit worried about Fallout 4 meeting those sort of high levels of expectation because no matter how good a game series is you always get a flop and not every game can live up to the hype so I was kind of worried about that and normally when there's a lot of hype surrounding something I'm sort of hesitant to say yes it lived up to the hype but honestly I'd say Fallout 4 does I'd say it really does live up to the hype I mean the game really does let you like, play out the game the way you want no matter which character it is unless they're important to the story you can turn around and kill them if you wanted to. There's all sorts of interesting dialogue in the game as well and you can choose to answer it however you want. You can give a serious answer. You can give a positive answer, you can give a negative answer, or you can be a sarcastic bastard, which I tend to do for most of my answers for this game. Funny how that works out, because I'm not sarcastic at all. But anyway, the game itself plays very well. I mean, yeah, okay, there's a few issues such as um, like I mentioned, the VAT shooting, even if you write in front of them and you max out the bloody stat, it's really frustrating when that happens. But apart from that, yeah, I mean, when you kill someone with the VAT shooting system, or the VAT shooting system, some people are probably going to crucify me for the, for the way I'm saying some of these, some of these things, but leave me alone. Um, yeah, sometimes it's frustrating, but when it works, you can get some really satisfying kills, and I'm sure some of them should be showing up on the screen somewhere. Somewhere. I, I'm, I'm sure at some point I'm pointing to one of them, it's... I'm pointing to one of them at some point. I'm just look like a crazy person right now until that's actually on there, and even then I might look a bit crazy. But yeah, Fallout 4 I think does live up to the hype. It's an interesting game, and it's got an interesting story. Some of the characters fall flat, but they're popped up by some interesting characters, and that's always a good thing. Um, when it comes to the graphics, it's not the most amazing game. I'm playing it on the PS4. The frame rate does drop quite substantially, but not much. So that's also a good thing. So when it comes to rating this game, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I really am. In fact, I don't do decimal ratings, but if I could, I'd give it a 9.5. But I don't. I tend not to do them, so I'm going to do 9 out of 10 for this game. There's only a few little things, a few little niggly bits that really do let this game down. But honestly, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I didn't really know what to think about the game when it first came out. It kind of starts off a bit slow, but once you get into it, you really get into it. And I can't wait to keep on playing it. In fact, it's on the TV right now, and I'm going to go play it in a minute. So, thank you for watching this video, please like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, subscribe if you haven't already, if you are a continued subscriber, as I always say, thank you for your continued support, if you are not a subscriber, please do, please check out my other videos, I've got more reviews coming up next year, this is the last review I'll be doing in 2015, but I've got plenty of games coming out in 2016, I'll be doing reviews for maybe most of them, depending on which ones I actually feel like I've got enough to talk about. So, I've done other reviews, W2K16, uh, Godzilla the Game, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist and my other reviews on this channel. I've got Let's Plays, I've got all sorts of fun shit. So, go and, w go and watch those, why not? Uh, thank you for watching this video, let me know what you think of Fallout 4. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.